Hi guys, and welcome to a new makeup video. I thought today we would do something a little bit different in the beauty makeup category. I took some comments and suggestions from Facebook, and this is what I'm gonna do today. A 4th of July inspired makeup, my own take on it. A little bit more toned down and pastel, because I don't know if I want like a thick red lip and a thick smoky blue eyeshadow while I'm sweating in the hot sun, lighting fireworks on Independence Day that we celebrate here in America. I just realized that it's not celebrated everywhere, but this is something that'll be a great twist for summer and it's more lightweight than something that's like a full-on dramatic beauty going out look just to have a barbecue with your family or light off some fireworks. It's one of my absolute favorite holidays. And today is also going to include a movie review of Jurassic World because, I mean, Chris Pratt's in it. There's dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. The series has been my favorite since I was a wee child. So let's get into the makeup and I'm gonna give a review on this movie. Let me start off by pulling my hair back so that we don't paint my bangs. And as always, I'm going to list the products right here as I go through and talk about this incredible movie, Jurassic World. This primer breaks me out, but it's the only primer I have. I need to go shopping for some new primers. Leave me suggestions for any down below. Jurassic World. Okay, first of all, I'm going to tell you that I absolutely loved it, but I'm going to tell you the things that everything has a pro and a con to it, in my opinion, because not everything is perfect. And I... Didn't expect a lot from this movie, and I got more than I thought I was going to get. It was absolutely great, but there was some things where I'm like, what? So first of all, I feel like every Jurassic Park trilogy movie is around some children, and how are they going to relate to these animals that are ancient dinosaurs? And there are two boys in this movie, one's a teenager, He's there for the teenage girls. I would whistle if I could, but he was one of those teenagers that really annoyed me. Like, he is one of those boys where, you know, his girlfriend says, I love you, and she sincerely means it, and he's just like, oh, hi, okay. And this boy and his little brother's aunt was played by that redheaded girl. I forgot what her name was. She's just one of those characters who you're supposed to hate at first because she has no sense of like a heart or reality or family or love in her until Chris Pratt shows up. And it feels like this movie was an entire, I, this is gonna sound terrible, Chris Pratt like trailer where they're trying to be like, oh, look how dreamy and all American with this man who builds motorcycles and helps saves velociraptors lives and treats them like pets like he's a rugged outdoorsman who's part of the animal world and just knows how to treat a lady, how to kiss them, how to drink Coca-Cola while he's working on his bike. And I'm like, okay, he's good looking, but I mean, he's one of my fit, top favorite celebrities. But I'm just issuing all the facts, putting it all out there, laying all my cards out. And they actually had one of the original Jurassic Park actors from the original Jurassic Park movie in this Jurassic World one. It was the Asian guy who was like the mad scientist. It played many storylines where it was about how technology changes everything and how everything's like technology based and it's a good thing and it has its pros and its cons and how like the younger generation should respect like the older things that brought everything to history and to life like in Jurassic Park from Jurassic World. And there was like stories with romance in it, there was action stories, there were stories about family. It was just all around pretty good on what they were trying to do there. But I didn't understand how, if anyone watched this movie where there was the aquatic dinosaur, like how'd they get DNA from that? You can't find that in an amber rock with a mosquito in it. And for some reason, I really did not like those flying dinosaurs. What were they? Pterodactyls? Because they were like these hybrid ones that were not explained and they had these weird mouths that were like T-Rex mouths. Speaking of T-Rex, that fight at the end with the two different dinosaurs, whew, oh my gosh. I forgot how amazing this brush is. The Real Techniques Expert Face Brush, lovely. I had this like red dot right here in the beginning that looked like a terrible, one of those laser dots like they had in the movie where they're gonna shoot something at the velociraptors. Speaking of velociraptors, could we talk about that amazing hybrid dinosaur they had. At first I'm like, they're not showing enough of it. It had like these camouflage technologies in it. 
Hope I didn't give away too much there. But they just could have showed way more of it. And I feel like I didn't get to see the entire dinosaur throughout the whole entire movie. Just bits and pieces of it. I also did love the fact that Chris Pratt... I see this movie, it seems like it's a lot about Chris Pratt. See, when you stalk Chris Pratt on Instagram like I do and see his promo pictures for this movie before it came out and you saw him as a Lego, like on a Velociraptor and he put it everywhere, I'm like, okay, does he ride Velociraptors in this movie? I'm not sure if that could work out. Out technically because velociraptors aren't some of the biggest dinosaurs yes I'm a nerd yes I'm really into this series as you could tell I need to get a Jurassic Park t-shirt like the old school one but let's go back to Chris Pratt because he was like speaking in velociraptor tones with like clicks and like he had these weird things and he would like train these velociraptors like Chris Pratt the Velociraptor Whisperer. I was like, excuse me, sir, how you do that though? My all time favorite dinosaur, if I had to pick one in the whole entire movie, I'm not gonna spoil anything because it was in the trailer. I'm definitely for sure that one in the water with the huge jaws. I was like hardcore fangirling whenever that dinosaur came on. I was like, yes, let this dinosaur just like eat everything in its path and destroy everything. Like, I don't know if I said this already, but I definitely saw this movie not once, but twice two days in a row with different people because I'm just like this is good for children if you if they're older like maybe 10 or older adults just elderly everybody needs to see this it's a family movie to see people get eaten up and these dinosaurs chewing on actual human bones but I just really like I guess it's not for all children but I definitely saw it twice just for that one dinosaur that just like did a chomp and just like ate people, dinosaurs in one bite. It was just my favorite. I don't know, it was something mysterious and creepy about it. It definitely was like a throwback to Jaws and I loved that movie. I still don't like going in the ocean. Not because I don't think I'm gonna get eaten up by sharks or anything. I just don't like the whole ocean atmosphere of like sand everywhere. Sand in your toes, sand on your under boobs, sand in your just cracks and crevices you didn't even know you had. It's just everywhere. And you have to wear like no clothes whatsoever. It's just not my jam. And it's usually during the hot seasons, which summer is around the corner. Beach bikini seasons around. Ugh, that just sounds terrible. I'm all here for like Halloween, Christmas. The only thing I like about summer is the 4th of July. My top three holidays, I just said it. Now that our skin looks semi-normal, let's talk about the red-headed girl who is like the main, who is she related to? She was related to Opie from the Andy Griffith Show way back in the day. This is before the land, before time, before there was Nick at Night and all of that stuff. That was a TV show and she seems really cool in real life, but her character in this movie, I'm just like, excuse me, we would never be friends. You don't deserve Chris Pratt. And she was supposed to be in a comedic value like that where you're like, you're you're not worth this position in life, ma'am, to control one of the greatest legacies of this park right now. I absolutely love the little orbs going through the fields to look at the dinosaurs. Oh, those are great. But let's speak about this woman. It was just like, okay, who were stilettos? while working not only in a zoo type atmosphere but one that's filled with dinosaurs in like a huge park. I would never, I would be wearing like, you know, boots. I wouldn't be running around chasing T-Rex in high heel stilettos. Excuse me, what are you doing with your life? Okay, I will try to like you because you're around Chris Pratt and these children and you control these dinosaurs and you control like one of the greatest parks but I don't think our friendship's going to work out real well. If you hear beeping and everything and just random noises throughout this video, um, yeah, they're doing construction across the street and it is 95 smooth degrees outside, so I have the AC on full blast, you better believe. Let's contour that nose. Speaking of nose contour, of course in movies I always pick out the makeup issues with it. Not saying I'm the best beauty makeup or special effects or any type of makeup person in the entire world, but I look at things like this and I want to critique everything so that I won't make those mistakes myself if I am on a job. And they did that makeup with that red-headed woman and it was like the contour was like lime brown, lime brown right here, lime brown, lime brown. She has beautiful cheekbones that I just admire, but if you do your cheekbone contour like to the max and she has that very harsh bang with that haircut just like Edna Mode from The Incredibles but red, not my cup of tea. You are living and working with nature or just, I, well they were like 
like chemically lab made dinosaurs, I guess. So that's what she kind of represented. And they needed an opposite personality from Chris Pratt. I understand. So the personalities are different. They like love each other and it works out in the end. I'm like, okay. I sound like I hate her and I'm like being really mean, but I'm trying not to be. Ooh, that's harsh. Don't you hate when you get your blush just like way too strong. Let's speak upon the rides in this park. I absolutely loved the feature of like the little museum, well their new museum in this Jurassic World and it was like this pyramid volcano looking thing. I'm using the totally wrong color than what I wanted to. I wanted to use my blush color. But they had this museum feature where you get to have a throwback to the Jurassic Park where it's like the little DNA man talking to you and they have virtual dinosaurs so that the children could learn more about the dinosaurs and they could have an experience of uncovering fossils themselves with like dusting off of bones and everything and I'm just like this is so cute and adorable. I would love to visit this place. Although I don't like that idea of like making a dinosaur in a DNA test tube whatsoever. Do you see the red, blue, the white of your eye? We're getting there. Plus, why would they let people work with animals that they don't know what they entirely are? Oh, this is a new dinosaur that you have to work with and train with and could almost get your body chopped in half and eaten up, but we're not gonna tell you what it is. Oh, and there was that one guy, he's from a TV show that I haven't seen. Was it New Girl? Maybe it's not the same guy, maybe it's just similar, I haven't seen New Girl. But he definitely is the one character in that movie that I would definitely be and relate to. And he was like trying to ask out the girl who is the officer from Orange is the New Black. And I was just like, I am so him. Like, he collected all the old memorabilia because I was a huge nerd, growing up, still am, of the original Jurassic Park movie. And he was just like, you know, I'm gonna wear the t-shirts, I'm gonna have all the memorabilia around my desk, and it's gonna be messy and amazing, and I'm gonna wear these cool hipster glasses. I'm like, sir, you are so me in this movie. You don't want it to look like your eyes are too, like, red and almost, like, rashed up and infected. You want them to look like they kind of blend okay together. This matte black eyeshadow is everything. I like how you guys were suggesting that I do a Jurassic Park makeup, but like what am I going to do, transform into a Velociraptor? I would have to build foam prosthetics on my face for that to work even for like months on end and it just won't work out. I'm so sorry. I wish I could, but for me to make it look good and for my t personal taste, I would want to like build an actual prosthetic on my face and that takes a lot of time and money. I've done it before and it's just like if I had the time and money, girl I would. Blend, blend, blend. Blending is key. Blending is like having Chris Pratt on your side while you're trying to defeat some dinosaurs. You just need it all the time whenever you can. Transition color though. I really hope they don't bring any animals back from the past and into the future because I feel like pretty soon we're going to have that technology and I will be scared to death because if you're going to bring back, I don't know, some rare extinct killer crocodile that's 50 feet long, how are you going to know the technology to defeat it if it eats all of us? I just realized I forgot to do my eyebrows. <laughs> Let me just finish this eye makeup and I'll do the brows last because we're already going there. Oh, don't you hate this part? It's just like, let me get right on this weird skin I didn't even know I had till I started doing makeup and putting crowns right next to my eyeball. I'm sure guys love watching this when we do this. They're like, excuse me, ma'am. Um, can you like not kill your eyeball, please? Thanks. Black eyeshadow just like to blend it with that eyeliner. I need more contour. Everyone says, you don't put enough contour. Um, I'm sorry. I don't like look like I have like a brown line of fake cheekbone that's not really there. I want it to look semi like my face wasn't totally painted. Can we talk about the awkward flirtation between Chris Pratt and I need to look up what that red lady's name is. But yeah, she was like flirting with Chris. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, if you're gonna flirt with Chris Pratt, you need to do it correctly and not just like, who wears sports shorts to a date? He can wear whatever he wants to, excuse me? With your Mercedes Benz, nude heel pump, run around a zoo park, weird Edna Mode haircut, weird contoured makeup. You flirting with Chris Pratt right now doing that? That's a no in my book. And can we talk about when Chris Pratt was anywhere near that motorcycle, like when he was drinking that Coca-Cola? I noticed a little makeup flaw, but maybe it's just me. But whoever did his makeup, they fake tanned or put dirt on his arms, and then the rest of like his face, neck, and body was just like his regular skin tone, like a more pale version. I was like, 
If you're going to touch Chris Pratt and put makeup on, you need to make sure that it looks as perfect as can be in triple, quadruple check. And now the two boys that this whole movie was kind of about, other than the dinosaurs, that poor little one was just like crying about his life and like his family issues and his older brother's like, let me just look at these cute teenage girls for a moment even though I have a girlfriend and like I'm texting her all the time and making sure that I'm okay but I'm just focused on these girls at the moment other than these dinosaurs that are really cool and I rarely get to see and they made this whole movie about it. So these eyebrows before I decide to paste actual eyelashes and fake hairs to my eyeballs. And before I forget, Anastasia, be on my side today. Let's do this. I need to take five years using you on my eyebrows. Can we also talk about how great those velociraptors were. I love how they had like, they had a little throwback to um, when they were feeding the T-Rex and like the flares and the goats and everything. Absolutely loved the old school Jeeps and be able to see those. And let's talk about those Jeeps. There was one part in the movie where these boys were like stuck in the middle of nowhere and they found like an old part of the old park in like this museum-esque setting in the rainforest part of the park. And they, decided that they needed to work one of these Jeeps, the ones from like the 90s, which is probably like 20 years something old. They don't even look old enough to drive, but they knew how to fix that car. If you were only fixed a car, they said one time, how are you gonna know how to fix a 90 something Jeep? Excuse me, and they did it like really quick. It just didn't make any sense. I'm like one of those children when I watch a movie where afterwards I'm gonna talk your freaking ear off and talk about everything and second guess everything like I'm brand new to this life and I was just popped into this world. Oh my gosh, and that one guy who's trying to work with Chris Pratt and Chris Pratt's like, listen, I know when I see a genuine person or not and sir, you are not a genuine nice person or care about animals or life or have a heart. I feel like eyebrows are the one thing that like needs to be the most focused on. If I, if your face was a car, eyebrows would be like the engine. You just need that for everything to function correctly <laughs> because it is so hard to get your eyebrows correct and even. It's probably easier to find a dinosaur. I also got a little bit terrified with my favorite dinosaur, the one that's the water one. They treated it like it was SeaWorld, like Shamu's life, where you get to go see the splash zone and it splashes you and you're seeing this animal inside of a giant pool, which kind of terrified me because there was this woman with like a little flight attendant tie who was like introducing the most vicious monster in the movie and she's like, okay, now that it can eat whole entire uh, 12 foot sharks from up in the air and just one little nibble, we are gonna bring you closer real quick and have have you see what else this animal could do which is splash you and then they not only do that they drop all the audience that's watching this animal just eating things in one chew like down below like their seats collapse and they go into this lower level to see up closer like here's you going closer with just the animal in a piece of thin glass separating you from this thing that's ancient we don't know enough information about to almost eat you alive it could let me apply these to my face oh my gosh this is so hard it must be easier to talk to the velociraptors and learn that than to put eyelashes on. Velociraptors are the scariest and have to be one of the most fearsome favorite dinosaurs of mine. I remember even as a kid, I would love to go to the dinosaur museums with my brother because me and him both love dinosaurs, him more than me, but like, that was like our jam, just like watching that movie. I've probably seen the original Jurassic Park at least 30 times. Girl, these lashes are like, one of my absolute favorite dinosaurs, also from Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, I'm talking so much about this, are those ones that spit stuff at you from the original Jurassic Park, and they have those like fan things on the sides of their face. This, it's like, if they had lashes, man, these would be close to them. Talking about dinosaurs having lashes. <laughs> Eyelashes on infinity and beyond fleek. Can we talk about how Chris Pratt, when he was drinking the Coca-Cola, was so like iconic and just stood out? It reminded me of like, maybe they put that in there purposely. Maybe it was a Coca-Cola ad. Did anyone else feel like that or is it just me? Jurassic World today is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Running and sprinting in stiletto heels by Christian Louis Vuitton. And that woman with the red hair when she was driving like her nephews across was like driving them in a $200,000 car. I'm like, Listen, you guys got the budget for this movie, that's for dang sure. I could never drive a $200,000 car, I'd be too afraid for my life and for others. I need more black eyeshadow. <laughs> I feel like every time, I'm just like, this needs more definition. This hourglass palette, I thought it was great, but thinking about it, I would only get this middle color. 
just to inform all y'all if you're thinking about getting it because I've raved about this palette and I do like it but just get that middle color which is the incandescent the lightest one my favorite part to put highlighter is like right here I know it's weird but you don't need much there but it's like my favorite I don't know why who has a favorite part of their body to put highlighter on the whiz needs to be up in here y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here now, like the language of the Velociraptors, let's speak in the language of lips because I'm gonna do something totally different today. It's not like it's never been done before, but like I rarely do this, but a lip tint, the Benetint, I hate this for cheeks and other things it says it could do, but for lips, I love it. It really stains. The staining power will last like, even when you try to wash it off, it'll last the next day. I feel like this is so blood of thy enemies putting on your lips because it's so watery and powerful. Because you want it to be like red, but rosy red. Like you just drank Kool-Aid on the 4th of July. My shirt today is even kind of American with this Thunderbird on it. This is as 4th of July as I'm going to get. I just don't want it to have like bright dark colors or makeup because like I said it gets hot in the 4th July times here in the United States when we celebrate and light off fireworks and eat all of the American barbecue and then I'm using the Colorful Girl Lip Lava because it's so sparkly it's like one of my favorite things and it just reminds me of like the sparkles in the sky when you light off fireworks don't you love that sound ugh sounds gross so let's get these baba pins out of our hair that is our finished makeup look and my finished I think I talked about almost everything from Jurassic World movie I might think about things later and forget while I'm editing this but I absolutely loved how this came out it reminds me of like a pastel independence in the lips oh, I just love it it's like rose glass I absolutely love how the lip gloss looks with the lip tint because it gives like Oh my gosh, those lips are so bold a little bit and interesting, but they're so like delicate because it's like a glassy effect and the eye combo. This is like a poised cheek color that I used on my eyes and my cheeks and it's in Manhattan and it is so beautiful. It has some shimmer in it. There's a lot of shimmer going on, but I feel like it's the combo with the light pastels, it's not too much. I could explain about makeup forever and about Jurassic World. So the combination of the two in this video, I hope I didn't spoil anything for the video. If you haven't seen the movie, you should see it. I mean, even if you're not into action movies with dinosaurs, ladies who just like makeup, it's really good good to look at the Chris Pratt in there. It's really good to analyze all of the makeup and all the details. I like looking at structures of plots and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this makeup look. I am definitely going to be wearing this on 4th of July. I just think it's so nice. We should set the makeup probably. I forgot to do that. Just so, you know, Hopefully you won't get too sweaty and it drip everywhere and that you don't burn these eyelashes on light while I'm lighting some fireworks. I hope that doesn't happen because I'm definitely, most definitely going to be lighting off some fireworks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below on what is your favorite movie that you've seen this summer. This is definitely one of my top favorite ones. I love chatting and doing these makeup videos. Let me know also if you like these type of videos because I love like just doing my makeup and talking to you like you my friends because of course you are. I hope you know that. And I will definitely see you in another video. Love you all. Bye.